time. Um, I'm interested in talking about recycling and your 20 years plus experience um, on batteries. Maybe you can um, elaborate really quick um, how you found into the way of battery research and innovation. Mm. Yeah, very easy answer. Uh, so okay. I, was, I was with Vata Batteries before I started professorship in Aachen okay. uh, until 99. And now since exactly 25 years, uh, we are working on, of course, all types of recycling issues. And of course, batteries uh, were from the first day on one of our big topics, starting with nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, even zinc mm -hmm. carbon and alkaline. Uh, okay. So all types of batteries um, have to be recycled uh, at the end of the lifetime. Mm -hmm. Also lead acid? Or also lead acid. Uh, lead acid is the battery system with the best recycling efficiency, mm -hmm. more than 98%. The reason is we, we have very little lead uh, applications. So the, the starter battery is more or less the application of lead. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to pay a deposit. 10 euros when we get a new battery for the car mm. and so everybody is interested to bring the battery back yeah it's a very good system so very good system but yeah. this is the only system you can say where we have a deposit mm. and maybe this is one of the lack uh, of, of a lower uh, recycling efficiency of all other battery types yeah so take us with you how does it look for the lithium-ion industry yeah. Moment. So in the moment there is no deposit. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we should divide that into two big groups. One is the consumer battery type. Mm -hmm. These are the small ones. They for Mobile smartphones, phones, uh, 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 tablets, yeah. uh, drillers and all that we have in our households. And the other one is the electric vehicle battery. Mm -hmm. Totally different world. Um, so the consumer batteries, they are collected maybe even 20 years after their use. Uh, coming in with it's a big, all, it's with all the big smartphones mixture. that one le leaves in the yeah. drawer, right? <laughs> you know, and, and uh, again, that is a different thing because mm -hmm. it is a social acceptance issue. Uh, if, if you have a driller at home, you have no problem to bring that to a recycling issue. But if you have a smartphone, you have a, always a fear that there is some data on it. Yes. And people uh, may have an excess. Even if you de uh, delete that, mm. there is a risk of people knowing how to come to the data. And on the other hand, we have no space problem. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look to the lab battery, it is a weight of 10 kilos. And mm -hmm. your, I think our partners in our home, they would c complain <laughs> if, you, if you keep a lab battery <laughs> in, your, in your household. So you have to bring it away, yes, but not, yes. not the smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so therefore, we, I think most of us have three, four, type, four generations of smartphones at home. Mm -hmm. So th that is one reason. But electric vehicle batteries, they are very big, yeah, very yes. expensive, very big. Yes. And um, I would say this is a B2B, a business to business thing. Um, once you change your car, you, you give the, the, the battery back to, to the OEMs and then they have to take care of what to do. Second use or go exporting from Europe somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I as a consumer, I don't have to deal with the battery recycling. Yes. So that will be certainly better organized than the consumer battery recycling. Mm -hmm. But you say will be, right? Will be. Then let me ask the question when. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say 10 years is a lifetime of battery in a car. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles are now on the market a few years old. So we can expect large volumes of electric vehicle batteries uh, maybe in five, six years. Okay. And therefore many companies in the moment they are in the starting position to build up capacities for recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look to the consumer batteries, they already return day by day by trucks uh, in a mixture, not sorted, all together in one big box yes. and uh, there are and also not labeled probably or not labeled I mean dirty mm. yeah uh, sometimes assembled if you mm. look to the the um, to the play uh, playing toy toy batteries they are sometimes five batteries assembled um, so you don't know what is on the truck you yeah. can say so uh, the only option there is uh, there's no remanufacturing obviously no. um, is um, to recycle so to tear yeah. apart the whole housing to and, and try firstly to sort as best as you can okay. uh, so there are automatic sorting machines now in place based on what criteria if you uh, don't know what's inside it's x-ray ah okay it's x-ray so mm -hmm. you, you every battery type have has a typically a, st uh, um, a, a typical um, construction um, design mm -hmm. it's a road cell or it has different sizes of, of of the electrodes or the contacts are different. So you can use, uh, of course, you can try to find labels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You can use the X-ray. 
you can use the, the weight density, uh, you can use magnetic separation, so you know some batteries have a magnetic steel shell uh -huh. and some have aluminum shell, so you yes. can use quite a number of, uh, of sensor types in order to get an optimized sensor uh, sorting technology. Mm -hmm. So okay. then you have the different um, areas and then you can continue. Okay, good. So first step, sorting. Um, after procurement of the um, yes. used batteries, um, if they return and don't mm -hmm. get on, on the for deposit. For consumer batteries. For consumer batteries. For car batteries, mm -hmm. we hope that there is a battery passport in future. Mm -hmm. 2026, if I'm Something like that, correct. there's a battery passport. Mm -hmm. And that there is a label on it which gives at least the information which type of battery it is because it may be not so dirty there in the, in the car. Yeah. To give a general understanding, right now we have NMC type batteries or base batteries and LFP, mm -hmm. right? So can you sketch out um, how the uh, recycling pathways differ from another? Completely. So there must be a reason why you sort. Completely. Okay. So uh, let, let's talk about the driving force to recycle. Mm -hmm. Different things. So, so one is, of course, we want to recover our valuable metals, mm -hmm. our valuable materials. Yeah, cobalt, that is nickel. Something like the metals, but also graphite. Mm -hmm. Maybe even the organics can be. Okay. Right? And of course, the aluminum casing mm -hmm. or steel casing. Yes. That is one driving force. The second thing, of course, is this general f good feeling of a green, sustainable thinking. Mm -hmm. That people bring that back and we want to have a better future. Yes. But that is not enough to finance a recycling process. So material is At one hand. If there are not no substitutions or anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And On the other hand, you have political uh, incentives. I mean, you have political, yeah. in, uh, not incentives. You have political directives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a directive that in the moment only 50 percent, but soon 65 percent of the weight must be recycled. Mm -hmm. We have a directive that until 2030 of the overall battery of the mass. overall battery mm -hmm. cell mass, not not everything around, yeah, but not the, the plastic cells. parts, not the, the bus bars, but the, the cell. Mm -hmm. In 2030, we have more regulations. That means we have f numbers for each element. Mm -hmm. So, for example, 80% of the lithium must be recycled. 95% of the nickel must be recycled. And something in 2030. 97% of the cobalt. Something right? like that. Correct. Yeah. 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 So. so that is another thing. It has to be recycled. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is now, who will pay? <laughs> the matter pays or the consumer pays, mm -hmm. or the OEM, somebody has to pay for it. Yes. Now looking into lithium iron phosphate, there's only lithium in, in it with a certain value, but only 3% of, of the value of the, of the weight of a, of a lithium iron phosphate cell is lithium. Mm -hmm. The other one is iron, phosphate, and casing, and electrolyte, no Cheap big materials. value. Yes. So we have to, we, we will see that battery recycles will only take these batteries in if there is a so-called gate fee. That means you have to pay if you want to have that recycled. Mm -hmm. For nickel cobalt, it is different. Yes, the, the material is so valuable that they So there the they business case uh, will grow organically, whereas yes. for LFP, um, it must be uh, incentivized to yeah. some extent or regulated to some extent. Interesting. Yeah, so n therefore, nickel, cobalt, copper, uh, to recover that is totally different yeah? mm -hmm. because we want to recover that. It's a really a chemical process compared to the lithium iron phosphate, mm. where we probably extract the lithium and then we try to find the best way to, to recover somehow the iron or phosphate. Mm. Ideas are there for, uh, for fertilizer, the phosphate, mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or recovering iron phos phosphorus alloys or something So like you that. can take the, the phosphate, the iron phosphate, process it further and then um, bring it into the loop of farming and agriculture? Um, it is a dream, yes. Okay. It is all a plan. I would imagine like the contamination due to the yeah, electrolyte exactly. would be that, a that critical. Is the, yeah, the aspect. electrolyte not, but heavy metals maybe if there are. Yeah. And, and you all don't, you never should forget that there c can be a cross contamination. If you have a nickel metal, a nickel cobalt battery together with the lithium iron phosphate, then you have these elements, these heavy critical metals, and yeah, you cannot like nickel, can forget like cobalt. You can forget about fertilizer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, because we bring that on our farm. Yeah, and, and what you just, just mentioned, uh, for consumer batteries at least, and probably there will be a little contamination on, 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 the, on the mobility batteries as well. Um, there can be, of course. I mean, no system will be perfect, I guess. Yes. Um, so, it should be solved. Yeah, yeah. So, therefore, they, they will have different technologies, and, and these are only two examples. Uh -huh. 
uh, if you look to this conference, we are, they are talking about new battery generations. I would say minimum of 20 different chemistries are in discussion. Mm -hmm. And that means the recycling process has to cope some, somehow with that. So we need a robust technology uh, which is capable to treat different chemistries in the same, or let's say, no, in the same process route, mm -hmm. not at the same time. Mm -hmm. so maybe some, with some modifications, but in the, otherwise you have to build up a completely new recycling plant for each battery yes, cell yes. type. And Forget then the business that. case is gone. Forget that. Yes. So, getting a little technical now, <laughs> um, what does the recycling look like for both of those pathways mm -hmm. on a conceptual level? Yeah, um, there is not one standardized process. Mm -hmm. So generally, I would say there are two philosophies. One is the chemical route, mm -hmm. dealing with acids and, and, and chemicals. And the other one is more the smelting route. Smelting? High, high temperature, okay. smelting. So what you can do, the easiest way is you have a, a high temperature furnace and you throw the battery in and wait what happens, you can say. <laughs> so so the, you degrade the, the components to the so elemental So you, you lose the lithium, you lose the graphite, you lose the organic uh, compound. The only recovery is ni nickel, cobalt and oh. maybe a little so bit of manganese. So the lithium goes into fumes or? Into slag ah. or fumes, right. Okay. So mm -hmm. therefore that is not sustainable and it will never meet the legislation. So therefore, for this process, you need to remove the lithium first before going into the smelting. And the slag will go to waste then? Uh, to to the idea to road construction, to the building construction, oh, wow. but you cannot but put the whole lithium into a road construction, then you lose that. So therefore, we have, before going into that high temperature mm. furnace, yes. we have to remove the lithium, to mm. recover the lithium. And that means we take the batteries, we go into a so-called thermal treatment. Mm -hmm. um, in this thermal treatment, we convert the lithium into a water-soluble compound, mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, we shred it, we separate that, and we get a so-called black mass with the lithium and valuable metals like nickel cobalt. Yes. And then, as the lithium is now water-soluble, we only need to wash it, like a wash machine. Yeah, and the water and will be recovered, I The I water hope. has to be recovered. You need a circulation of the water. You need a lot of water. That is the biggest issue. You are completely right. If you don't solve the water circulation, you forget that. Okay. Otherwise so what, what, what amounts are we talking per kilowatt hour of battery? Uh, I cannot say per kilowatt yeah. hour is what we are talking or about. What is the measure? Cubic meters of water per kilogram. Ah, okay, that's the measure. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's an enormous amount of water. So a thousand um, liter, like a, a ratio of one to thousand. Or something, something like, like that. that. Yes. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so, but, but if you circulate that and you have some kind of a membrane techniques to recover the lithium out of that, yeah. um, then you have other afterwards a black, so-called black mass without lithium. Mm -hmm. And that is perfectly for the smelting now because you recover the, nic the heavy metals, the mm -hmm. valuable metals, mm -hmm. and you create a slag for building co Okay, but it's also then really free of heavy metals because um, just the consumer perspective now. Yeah, yeah. I have my, my kids playing on the street and now I know there is cobalt, nickel and the slag that yeah, yeah. went into the asphalt. Or is that something that there is... There is never a zero. Yeah, okay. And there's uh, the same as there's never 100%. Yeah. Uh, so th in, in, in the so-called PPM, parts per million level, you will find these heavy metals. But of course, in, if you want to bring that into road construction or into building construction, uh, then you have to pass a lot of measurement and, 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 and uh, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, allowance um, protocols. Okay. So this is one route. Yeah. But for NMC, and now we're talking about... No, but NMC, I again, can yeah. be... Uh, people don't... Uh, not all people don't want to have this furnace. Yes, and then you take so the chemical So the route. other alternative is you take this black mass without lithium because that is a super idea for everybody, mm -hmm. have the lithium out, and then you go into chemical route. Okay. So you put a lot of acids on it mm -hmm. and you leach more or less everything out. Okay. And then everything is in solution. Yeah. Or most of that. The only thing which is not in solution is the graphite. Okay. So we are now d developing processes to recover a battery type graphite from this residue. Is the graphite really valuable um, mm, from the question. share price? <laughs> uh, it is very difficult to back to battery mm -hmm. because in this very hot acid pro process, the graphite modifies. 
So therefore, you have to re-graphitize that again. Ah, right. Uh -huh. uh, very difficult. But you can use the graphite for other applications. You, you can make graphite okay. connectors for electric engines. All right. You can make okay. graphite electrodes. So there is an like upcycling that. possible. There is an upcycling possible. Mm -hmm. That is the idea. But the only must, the thing is, you, it must be clean. Yes. No nickel, no cobalt on it. Yeah. For the graphite rule, and, and also we want, don't want to lose these metals. Okay, so that is then it's the graphite yeah. out, mm -hmm. and we have nickel, cobalt, and and all everything is in solution. Everything else. So now we have to remove the impurities mm -hmm. by neutralization. Yes. So, and then later on we have to remove the nickel, cobalt, and copper by neutralization. So, so at the very end, other chemicals involved. At the again? very end, you have some chemical products. Mm -hmm. And again, a wastewater with all the neutralization salt. Because if you put acids and then neutralize alkaline, them, neutralize them yes. then you have a salt. Yeah. And this is a very salty mixture. And you have to do, do something with that. Again, you cannot put that in a river. You have to circulate. What does it mean um, for the non-chemist and material scientists among us um, to have a, a, a high... Um, um, Saline, a saline, a salty, um, high saline, yes, saline, a salty, high saline compound. You, you, of course, you can, you can evaporate the water completely, and then you have a salt, yeah. and deposit that, yeah. landfill. So it's it's, but it's a salt of, of different elements, right? It's sodium not like sulfate, sodium chloride, sodium chloride so but it's salty like water. No? And, and, ah, okay. and and therefore, some countries, of course, <laughs> not Germany, they just threw that into the ocean. Oh, okay. So it's really um, sodium chloride that you get out as the salty mm -hmm. solution, not mm -hmm. like also potassium chloride or magnesium chloride or... Well, it depends what you use as a chemistry, but it, yeah, it yeah, can of be. Course, it can um, be. Yes. Like some additives and electrolyte, I don't it's know. It's a neutral salt yeah. and, and some countries think it's the same like ocean Yeah, wow. and put it there. But, but of course, that is not a solution. Yes, course, yes, not I that. So you have to circulate that, you have to remove the salt, and the salt has no use, so you have to dump it somehow. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not a zero... Again, it's Could not you feed waste. that um, back uh, into the sodium ion battery production? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but this is a multi multi-metal salt, yeah. and you have to separate that again. So the multi-metal is then with it's trace sodium, elements It's sodium, potassium, of aluminium, yeah, everything in, chloride, fluoride, everything is there. Yeah, okay, gotcha. And remaining lithium. Okay. Yeah, if, if, if you lose. So evaporation is not the solution. Yeah. What is better is to circulate that back through membrane techniques Uh, where also people in, in, in Aachen, like Lubke um, from AVT Institute, they are working on that mm -hmm. uh, together with us um, to, to, to recover the water from okay. that. So you see, the, I think the main issues are always around the process. Uh -huh. It is the water, it is the flue dust, it is the energy, it is something like waste treatment, it is the use of these things. The extraction of the valuable metals or materials is much is more or less solved. Wow, that's that's important to know. Um, and that is covering the NMC route, either um, through chemical or smelting route. Or smelting. Okay, gotcha. How about LFP? LFP, no solution up to now in place. Mm. Um, there are different ideas. The best would be, as I mentioned, we remove first the lithium, mm -hmm. then go into a chemical process, mm -hmm. dissolve it, and recover iron phosphate mm -hmm. from that. Yes. And then you combine the iron phosphate together with the lithium carbonate of the early stage mm -hmm. and produce a new lithium iron phosphate compound. Which will probably require a lot of energy. A lot of water, a lot of chemistry, a lot of energy, yeah. everything. Um, This would be the, the king route, I would say. <laughs> yeah? What is hindering us? From uh, the king route? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, what I mentioned. It's resource demanding, enormous resource demanding. Ah, so you mean the king route from a, from a technology point of view, but not from a from a from business case. From economical rules, yes. From an economical yeah. uh, perspective. The alternative is to take lithium out and um, go with the remaining part into again in a smelting furnace. Mm -hmm and produce an iron phosphorus alloy. Okay. FEP, you can say. FEP, yes. And that is then used in different applications in cast iron uh, okay. industry. So also a kind of a sideways upcycling. W 
but on the other, but what is not so good is that the market for iron phosphate is not so big. Okay. And if you if you look to the enormous amount of lithium iron phosphate, I doubt that there will be enough outlet uh, p potential for it. Mm -hmm. You can run this process a little bit different. You produce only iron, um, maybe pig iron with mm -hmm. some carbon in it, and push the phosphate into a slag where you have a lot of calcium in it and make calcium phosphate slag. Okay. And fortunately, if everything is good sorted, there are no heavy metals in it. Yes. <coughs> and then you can use this slag, hopefully, yeah, in some kind of uh, agriculture. Wow. Yeah, yeah but I, 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 even now, there is so <laughs> much debate about uh, the pollution of our food um, chain um, with mercury and fish. And you yeah, know, yeah, you have to be um, very careful that there is no heavy medicine. A difficult road. I mean, yeah. just um, from a like a non-professional perspective on that matter, uh, from my point of view, yeah, that, that is how I uh, perceive it. So that means from a closed loop perspective, which you are obviously focusing on a lot, um, do you think iron phosphate is not the best solution for the future? It is an easy solution for the battery people, Yes. for the car manufacturing people, because yeah. they don't have to invest so much mm. in the battery. The electric vehicle car will be cheaper. Yes. The consumer may be convinced to buy that easily, yes. more easily, but uh, always, like life, at the end, <coughs> the problem occurs. Wow, wow. Thank you, Professor Friedrich, for giving us the insights. Um, I think not many people know about this. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, LFP is quite hyped at the moment um, because it's so cheap, because it uh, accelerates the transition to electromobility and cobalt and all these elements which are in the NMC technology have really bad reputation, of course, um, but it's important to, to understand that both sides have their pros and cons, and this is what I really learned today. Thank you. Okay, it was a pleasure.